Hey, welcome everyone to the Unfiltered Podcast. My name is Lee Stevenson, and I get the privilege of helping and overseeing church planting with Converge. My name is Danny Parmalee, and I oversee church planting for Converge Mid America. And uh, today we got a special guest uh, from down the street, South Florida. So, want to welcome Matt Scholl to uh, to the podcast, man. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. So, Matt, you planted roughly 15, 16 months ago. Um, yep. with your grand opening. Um, tell us a little bit about where you're at and specifically why did you decide to plant City Lift Church there? Yeah, because South Florida's got all the good weather. This is February. <laughs> Come on. So, um, no, well, I, you know, we we definitely started with just a heart to bring people to faith in Christ, and it, which kind of turned us into church planners, realizing this is the most effective way to make a disciple. And then the area, we, uh, we've been serving in South Florida since 2011, and we just, over, over the time, we realized, man, God is talking to us about this community, about these people, we, we're connecting well, and uh, we just knew that we, it's kind of like we knew that we knew, it's like, God, this is where we're supposed to be. We had a lot of peace, and um, it still made it an uphill climb. I, I think sometimes God's will uh, is beautiful, but it's still got a lot of battles in it. You know, it doesn't always come easy, but but uh, with that came a lot of blessings and and uh, some great fruit. So we're grateful. So um, facility wise, where did you guys launch from? Uh, give us a, a makeup of specifically the for sure. targeted area. Yeah, so we we built some teams in our our townhouse for a while. Then we went to a community center, and then we launched in a school. So we're in a high school down there. Okay, um, Fort Lauderdale proper or. Yeah, area called Oakland Park, so it is its own city, but it's kind of greater, greater Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, yep. And uh, you have a lot of millennial and Gen Z that are a part of your church. The majority of kind of what makes up your your church at this point. What have you done that's helped you connect and bring in that generation? Uh, that's a great question. I, I think, and I feel like so many churches across uh, just the world, you know, definitely, definitely in the West, are asking that question and. Um, we, um, you know, a couple of things, we're a young family. So I think we related just naturally to young families. Um, but the other word I would just say is we were intentional. We were very intentional about who we felt like God was asking us to reach and get ready for the upcoming generation. And even Gen Z is very different than millennials. I mean, you know, people are kind of talking less millennials now because millennials are old, man. We're close to 40 now, you know? And, and so now here comes Gen Z, and and then I think they've even named the generation after them now. So it's just it's amazing how it goes fast, and you know I have a conviction the gospel has to go out and it's got to go down. So we were very intentional, and we realized we need to we need to build our marketing, our messaging, our Sunday services, and we were just intentional in building it that way. Um, I definitely don't have it all figured out. I have probably more questions than answers, but. Um, um, so uh, give me some examples when you say intentional about it. You did you did mention marketing. I do want to touch on that a bit. But other than marketing, what were some of the things that you um, either do or say that you're, you have that in the back of your mind? Here is who we're trying to reach. And so we're going to specifically do this. Absolutely. So a couple, a couple just, I think, culture shifts that are kind of happening for millennials and Gen Z and you know, first generations, right, totally raised on social media, TV, internet. Um, and so they no longer have 30 opinions to navigate through. They have 30,000 opinions to navigate through. And and I no longer compare my life to five people. I compare my life to 5,000 people on Instagram. And and that's drastically changed the way that our minds, I think, have developed and, and the way that we gather information and learn. And so so church is no longer about just feeding information or telling you something. It's about being in community. And so we recognize if you if you choose to come on the weekend, you, you you know obviously we want a great message, we want excellence, but but you're really not coming for production. Especially in South Florida, you could you could go somewhere to get incredible production that I'll never be able to, to even get close to. So so we realize really what it is is community that that we're changing a little bit from church is, you know, super heavy production focused to maybe more of an authentic worship experience where you can be in community, where you can ask questions, where somebody might hit you up during the week just to see how you're doing. And so we're realizing relationship is starting to take over. You know, so I feel like the last 20, 30 years, church has been about like, all right, we got to be cleaner. We got to be more produced. We got to, which I think at the time really we needed, you know, because Kind of before that church right. was like, hey, let's just throw anything together, sing a couple of hymns, and you know, Sister Sue can do it. So, so I've realized that. But, but watching a lot of particularly Gen Z, even more millennials for me, 
is like they want an authentic experience and they want the relationship. And we're trying to build our back door as well as our front door right now. So I don't, I don't, it's a lot, it's a huge question, but yeah. these are some um, things I'm What do noticing. you do uh, for, do you have a specific system or structure for groups? Do you call them small groups? What's really important? Because I mean, people say, hey, we have small groups, but it looks totally different than someone else. So for sure. Yeah. So we do lift socials. We, we, that was one thing and a good, it could be the Gen Z influence. Small groups didn't really work for us and because it was too structured. So we said, let's kill that. Let's just kind of have more of an organic approach to relationships. So two things, we're intentional with our leaders to have them take people out and spend time with them. And what we realize is, is like a lot of these guys, they don't want to come to a structured event. They, they want to be seen and they want to be in relationships. So we realize we're going to have to take a totally different, way more chill approach to, to getting to them. And so our leadership is active. And then we do socials where it's just, you know, relationships pretty free flowing. Um, and, and we're exploring some digital options too, you know, in the next couple of years. Oh, so uh, you, I, I didn't hear exactly. So you said lift social or what? Yeah, that's so we the name lift of social so, and it's just gatherings. We'll get, we'll do food trucks. We'll meet at a, a, a cool venue, um, and hang out. And it's, it's so just, how do people know about that? Do they come on Sunday so, and they're like, Hey, yeah, there's a lift Sunday, social or there's Instagram, a, yeah. we have a website, mostly Instagram. I would say the bulletin board for us is Instagram. How do you structure those? And not have structure because I know I <laughs> yeah, you know, know that I, I think that's, I know that's part of the game is, it is. is because there, there is an end in goal you absolutely know, in that, yeah. that process so like how do you plan a lift social but make sure that there is a spiritual conversation or something that takes place that is moving people where you hope to that absolutely I, so you know we and we how do you calendar <laughs> your spontaneous I know, events exactly. I know it's so hard um you know those are two great questions so one is I think and I think every church has to answer how you want to do this right so so we kind of like the idea at, at least in philosophy that everything is discipleship and we want people to be worshiping serving giving sharing their faith we want them to be in fellowship and really what a live social is for us is just it's the opportunity to begin to build friendships and relationships. So so if you kind of came in as a stranger on the edge of our church, you had several great conversations really about whatever, you know, and, and that's where we kind of give them the freedom there. It's like we want you to start building relationships and friendships. And if that's taking off, that's a win for us. And so that's kind of how we how we tackle the fellowship piece. Sundays, you know, we're a little bit more active. And, and again, we're looking at kind of doing a City Lift University thing. So I, I'm looking at kind of doing almost what Live Church did. They took a lot of like the personal discipleship. They moved it all online. And as we grow, I'd like to go that way a little bit. But okay. so it's just, it's it's doing discipleship, covering the bases just in a little different way. Um, How are those funded and how are they governed? So in other words, if someone said, hey, I got a great idea. Let's do food trucks. Who's paying for that? And then what if someone else says, hey, we're going to the to Hooters? I don't know, whatever, right, some extreme right. example where it's like, yeah, well, actually, that you can't yeah, put social lift on yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. So, like, our leadership is obviously, like, we're, we're still picking the places. We're, we're organizing the venues. You know, we're doing the marketing there. So, so no Hooters yet. Okay. So. It is South Florida, so no. But, no, it is. <laughs> hey, no. Times are changing. Times I'm are changing. Saying, you but, know? No, no, no Hooters yet. So. Um, but, um, but, yeah, so we, our leadership is still you know, kind of leading, leading the charge with them. So. No, I, I, uh, I mean, it's normal to have some serious pain points when you're less than a year and a half old. Um, so this is unfiltered podcast. Like what, what have been one or two of your pain points in the life of the church? Maybe it's because of, you do have a lot of young people in the church or just being a, not quite year and a half year old church. Right. Yeah. I know there's too many pain points to mention. <laughs> I, we talked about this before. I go, Oh man, yeah, it's all, yeah. it's all pain. You know? Um, no, there's, there's definitely some huge challenges. I think, which again, I have, I've relied, I've had to fall back a lot on like, God, you know, I, I know you called me to do it. I didn't even really want to do it. Kind of, kind of story when he started talking to me about it. Um, and so I was pretty comfortable. So, so I think I've, fallen back on that a lot. But a couple things for me is, is I, I do, I did not enjoy the fundraising thing at all. Um, that's, I'm not, I've never been a salesman, you know, I've just never been a salesman. I've been, been blessed to be in full-time ministry for 16 years. I I'm comfortable in the speaking role. I'm comfortable in the, the pastor shepherding, you know, kind of counseling ish kind of role. I do not like sales. I do not like fundraising. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I just don't enjoy it. And so for me, that was a huge one. We did well, but it was really hard for my personality. So I think, I think that was tough. 
Um, I don't like rejection. You get rejected a lot if you're going to plant and get used to it. It's your friend. You're going you're gonna to go through disappointments. Um, and then being misunderstood. I think when you're a pioneer, you are going to get misunderstood. The community may not understand what you're trying to do. Other, other churches may not understand. Uh, even people in your own kind of plant context, I think plants are notorious for drawing all kinds of different people. You know, a lot of people, That's their nice own agenda. Yeah, different, yeah, <laughs> different yeah, people, yeah. And so... We, I call them crazy. Thank you, so, yeah, yeah. It's unfiltered, right? Just go go for it. But um, so I think just getting misunderstood or, or kind of kind of maligned a little bit like that is definitely hard and painful. And so I've, I've gone through all those things. And, and I think sometimes, you know, particularly about six, seven months ago, I just had to go through, just I had to make it a week. I just had to breathe and just go another week, go another week. And right now, the last couple of months has been a neat little season of, of growth and a lot of good things happening for us. So I think our spring's shaping up really good, but you just have to breathe and go a week. Yeah. Um, I want to circle back to fundraising because, um, you know, I know a little bit of your story. You, you actually did exceptionally well at fundraising and yet to hear that it was a pain point uh, for you. How did you keep going? And what advice do you have? Had to pay the guys? bills, so, man. My <laughs> wife's like, "Yo, you gotta pay the get rent. Out there, like, get out money. there, make, yeah. make my no, money." No, but I mean, for no. real. I mean, how did you continue to follow the process, be obedient, even though it was contrary to who? I mean, some people like it. There are those people right. like, "Oh, there's the thrill." Oh, I know. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's 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 a little nutty." Yeah, but, it's not me. But yeah. it was not you. But you continued. What? Yeah. What honestly did just keep you going at it? Um. Yeah, no, I mean, part of it was, I think, the pressure, you know. Uh, I would highly recommend the book, Steve Shadrach, uh, The God Ask, you know, a great book. That that helped me a lot, uh, definitely. You know, again, I, I think God was on it. I, again, I, I kind of have to fall back on that a little bit. It's You definitely are praying, you're asking God, and you're asking people. And while I wasn't a great fundraiser, I, I'm relatively good with relationships. And so I, I let relationships develop and friendships develop, and out of that came the ask a lot of times. And sometimes it was yes, and a lot of times it was no, but I just kept going and, you know, just trusting God every step of the way. So I, But I read the right things. I read the right things. I listened to the right things. I talked to a lot of fellow church planners, which kept me motivated. And a lot of it's just the grind, in my opinion. You just got to keep going, yeah. Keep going and not give up. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, Matt, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and sharing a little bit of your story and the story around City Lift Church. And for our listeners, if you're in the Fort Lauderdale area or adventuring down in that area, um, stop on in. Great church there, City Lift Church, and excited to see what God continues to do through your ministry down there, Matt. Till next time, everyone, uh, keep it real. 